You heard me? I said my holler at y'all later on in the game. You heard me? Stay away from that dope player and stack. Good morning, good morning. We're back again for our second episode of You Heard Me with Dr. King. Before we start, we want to uh, praise God for this opportunity of being here. Before we start any show, we always want to uh, praise God for just blessing us to be here right now and the opportunity that, you know, that we have. So, um, praise, we're going to give God all the praise and glory. Um, today we have a very good topic. Um, the topic is raising today's child, what it takes to raise today's child and to keep them focused. So, I mean, what better experts to have than actual parents who have kids that are excelling in sports and doing good in school. So to my left is Devonna Larice, and to my right is some childhood friends of mine, the Will Rice, Bryce and Dana. And um, I'm glad they were able to make it here. So um, like I say, man, we, the reason why this topic came about last week, on the sh uh, last week on the show, one of the kids had said that they stay focused a lot. So thought about let's come up and, you know, ask the parents, what do it take to keep your child focused and to keep their head straight? Because sometimes when I get the question asked to me, man, you're so outspoken or you're always talking about controversial subjects, but what about the kids? I'm not the kid's daddy. All I, if, if all I do is give encouragement, try to you know, show my face or do things in the community or get people ex-convicted felon jobs, at the end of the day, you still have to go home. So no matter what I do, an essay contest or a bus ride to Angola or St. Gabriel, then, you know, things we did our future events. No matter what we do at Dr. K. Inc., you still have to go home. So I'm not, no, I'm not anyone's dad, I'm not trying to be anyone's dad. So I can say what I want to see, you know, so... Um, I mean, you know, I'm going to get straight to it, Dana and Bryce. I mean, what, what do it take to raise the day's child and keep them focused? Plenty of communication. Yes. And Kay. being honest with the kids. Yeah. Just letting them know that you have gone through these things and that it's th whatever they're going through or whatever issues come up for them, that you've already gone through it or you have a friend that has gone through it and you honest with them on how you, how you all dealt with it. If you've done something wrong, just be honest with the kids, and that way, if something is going on with them, they'll always be open to come and talk to you. Yeah. And and that's pretty much how we are. Our girls, we we talk to them, and it's raw, it's uncut. I don't, we don't sugarcoat anything. I know, I know, I don't. I know sometimes since we have girls, Bryce will look at me a little yeah, crazy, I, I, but I am raw and uncut. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just actually give it to them just how they would get it in the street. Yeah. And that's how it was given to me by my mom and dad. So that's that's what I know. It worked for me. Hey, I grew up in Preston Hollow. Everybody, when I say that, everybody's like, oh, you came out of Preston Hollow? Yes, I did. I came out of Preston Hollow. I came out of the third section of Preston Hollow. It was a house full of girls. I have two brothers. But my parents were always up front and honest with us. Whatever they did, for the good, bad, or ugly, they always kept us in the know. Whether it was money, whether it was some things they did as far as maybe try out drugs or some things like that, they always let us know, and that's the same thing. That's the same thing we do with our girls. Okay, so do you do you are you fighting against like most parents fighting against this uh, the social media age, the computer age, the phone age, or whatever? Do you have that problem like um, the kids more interested in um, more interested in Facebook or more interested in the social media site or compared to you know you have that problem? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely a problem, but you, you have to start early. You know, you, you instill the right stuff in your kids early, and when this kind of stuff comes up to them, it'd be like a, a decision road for them. Yeah. You know? right. And if you instill the right things in them, when that road comes, the, the right road is always going to look better to yeah. them. They have no <coughs> consequences beforehand you know, if I take this road, not saying that even though you give them all the right advice, mm -hmm. they won't say, well, let me try this a little yeah. bit, you know, but still, you got to start early and then still the right things in them early. And then right. that. But life, like, and I to tell you, I, I've always been, since they can talk, I'll give them choices. You can either do this or that, but if whatever choice you make, know that you have to deal with the consequences. Whether it was a cookie, whether it was a, a drink or anything, then they always knew that they had a choice to make and they would have to deal with the consequences of it. And if you start with that early, I think it works. Okay. I have, uh, my son, one of, one of my sons, he, um, he's real good in basketball. He haven't played yet. He's just starting this year to get his grades back. But a couple of years ago, he's steadily cutting up in school, steadily cutting up in school. And I'm like, dude, 
I was the class clown in school. Like you, <laughs> like you trying, like you trying, you trying stuff I done did, bro. Like you know, like come on, we gonna, but we gonna see who gonna outlast who. So he started cutting up. So one day I took, I took like four pair of Jordans or whatever and gassed them now. Yeah. And we burned them up <laughs> because you don't deserve nothing. Because because if your parent, if your parents making all kind of sacrifices, running, ripping and running, trying to work and, and, and provide for you, get every privilege that you need. Yeah. So the least you can do is do what you have to do in school. So I didn't have no I didn't have no male guidance coming up. I wasn't blessed to have that. So now I have the opportunity to be around my son and my children. So y'all not about to do y'all y'all might y'all not about to do this. So you know what? Y'all can go ahead and do it. You're not getting nothing. Yeah. So before before I go waste my money on some shoes, clothes, vacation trips, whatever, you staying home and you're not getting anything. You know what I'm saying? So let's uh right, to my to my love here, Divina. Divina, what you what's your take on this topic? Time. A little time, putting time in with your kids, always work. I have five, well, six at home, 18, 12, 11, five, three, and two. And they want time. <clears throat> if it's just to hear the poem that they wrote at school today, you know, yeah. it's time. And I teach them, like Dana said, it's consequences. Everything you do right. is a good. If you do something good, you get rewarded yeah. good. You do something bad, you got a consequence to it. You have detention, something, something taken away at home. Yeah. And you're not going to just be out there running in the streets. That's right. So, so like, no nonsense, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. And with all girls at home, I have to keep it real. All girls. All girls. <laughs> we have all girls. Yeah, we have all girls. All girls. And I keep it very open with them. I let them know. I have an 18 year old at home. I let them know. Don't let no little boy be trying to pick you up at no 11 o'clock at night. That's a booty call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he ain't paying no bills. He ain't taking care of you. You still living with me. That's a booty call. You know, you treat yourself better than that. Uh, uh, none, of, none of my, uh, well, my stepdaughter, she, I, I love her like my real daughter. She stayed with me. My youngest son, he stayed with me. But my daughters, I, I, I've never held nothing back with them. And I told, what I told my daughter is, I said, don't mess with nobody how I used to be. Now, I'm going to get it to you playing this <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't you, know, you know, trying to hit or whatever. I said, I'm going to tell you what, you know, yeah. trying to hit or don't, you know, don't mess with nobody how I used to be. You all you know what I'm saying? Y'all saw what y'all mamas went through when I was, you know, you know, don't mess with nobody how I used to be. You know, try to save yourself because all, all somebody, all the little boys want to do is won't hit. And then they're going to sit up there and go to the little partners and talk about it or whatever. I say, so I can't control your private part. Mm -hmm. So if you won't give it up and let have somebody talk about you, it have nothing to do with me. I can, all I can do is tell you, school you or, or whatever, and, take, and hope you take heed to it. You can take heed or not. Mm -hmm. And with my boys, I let them know. And with my boys, I let them know, you know, I'm really kind of hard on them. You know, and all I ask is respect your elders. Respect your elders and do your schoolwork or whatever. But, you, you know, you're not doing nothing. Matter of fact, I just had an issue with one of my sons, and he, um, Call himself talking back to me, you know. Call himself talking talk. So I Adrian, I have the Adrian Peterson. You know I mean? That's how I go down my. I don't tell. I don't care what y'all say, America. You hear me? That's how I go down mine. You ain't, ain't ain't nobody about to dictate how I raise mine. First of all, so yeah. take that to the bank. So he called himself brazen up to me and um, suck on tell me I advise you not to do that again. I'm like, huh? Oh, I'm like, boy, yeah. dead fast. Yeah. So yeah, so um. Yeah, Bruce Lee on. <laughs> <laughs> so look, it was about, it was about two, three months. I told him, I said, boy, ain't nothing. Until you come apologize in front of your other siblings to me, ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. So his birthday came. You know what you got? He got a text message. Happy birthday, son. Love you. Um, um, Easter came. It's not you, you. You get nothing because I do. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I've come too far. I'm ripping run. You know, I rip and run out, up and down. Get making sure dump trucks run for you, you know. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm making all kind of sacrifice. I don't even buy myself anything to make sure y'all have. Yeah. You playing with me? So we're gonna see who gonna they don't who gonna appreciate break for that. Them. They don't appreciate that, and they don't see that. Yeah. yeah. They don't see the struggle that we we sacrificing ourselves, going without, and they walk around with new Jordans on, and yeah. you know yeah. they want this and that every week. They need something, but they don't see that we go without. We don't have. Yeah. You know, the sacrifices that we making for them. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I think more or less with kids, you have you you have to be honest and upfront with them. 
I know Bryce. Bryce probably say I say I tell too much, but I say I say everything. <laughs> if we don't have no money, look, don't ask for nothing. We ain't got no money right now. Oh, okay, mom. Are they and now yeah, they're at the that, no. they're they at that, the no. point to where they'll ask. Um, before I say something, do we have any extra money? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm up front. Yeah. We don't have. We may not have it. We and now if we if we trying to do something, whether it's a car, a house, or or get, you know save some money for something, to take a trip. I'll say, okay, this is what we're doing. Don't ask for this. Don't ask for that. Because we try. We trying to get. We have a goal in in mind, and we all will have to, you know, contribute to this. I'm not asking you to give money, but I need you to be considerate of what's going on in the household. Everybody has a role, and I think if, if kids understand their role in the household, then everybody is fine. This is daddy. I'm mama. You are the child. You have, you have two jobs to do. You have your job, your first job is to go to school, make sure your grades are right. Your second job is to make sure whatever chores you have to do at home. Now, that's a big thing at our house. We have all girls. they all honor students. Their rooms are not the best. <laughs> that's my biggest thing with that. we don't we don't have but we don't have like the talk back thing we don't have any of that so i let a lot of stuff slide because i don't have a whole a lot of issues that i hear about you know that I, i'll read on facebook or see other parents dealing with so some stuff i let slide bryce is a military guy so of course he's more organized i'm not i'm not as organized myself so i a lot of stuff i'll let go but i'll say okay when i'm tired of it Look, get it together. And they don't know. Even if I'm out of town, because I know y'all see sometimes I'm on Facebook, I'm out of town. But even if I'm out of town and I'm about to come back home, they don't know when I'm coming home now. Yeah. So they try, yeah, they try to clean up the house. Them. Everything yeah. is always in place before I get there. But they, they know. But that's a, that's the respect that they have. Yeah. But we've had, I've had that one thing where my oldest daughter, I think she made about 13 and she got a little smart or something. And I was sitting on the sofa that night, me and Bryce watching TV, and she said something. And went in the room and closed the door. I said, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I put on my shoes, <coughs> and I walked in the room, and I locked the door behind me. And I said, the best woman will walk out of here. I heard Bryce jiggling a knob at the door. She didn't come out that room till about 3 o'clock the next day. Because you're not going to talk to me any kind of way. We make too many sacrifices in this house. And to this day, I bet you can't tell, she can't even, she won't even raise her voice. But the other two saw that. And I've never had any problems out of the other two. They heard the bumping and, the, and all of that. But I've never had any problems out of, out of them. But I think if you up front with kids and they understand where you're coming from, and they know you're not coming from a, a mean place, you're coming from a place of love, they'll be more open to take what you have. And so just being a good parent. Just being honest and open. Yeah. Yeah. You, open you know, we yeah. have, what we have yeah. is that. Let them see that yeah. you have faults. Right. Yeah. 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 You're, you're not perfect. Yeah. Well, you're I'm not totally perfect. different. <laughs> Mine went in a room and slammed the door, and I took the door off the head. <laughs> so today she has yeah. no door on her room. <laughs> they didn't want to take the trash out. That's I took the mom. trash can and put it yeah, outside put it by the big garbage can. So now you have to go all the way outside to throw something away. Excellent. Yes. I play games. Y'all want to play? Let's play. Right. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> game time. Yeah. yeah game. game time. I mean, man, that, I mean, that's, I know, I know, I mean, I met y'all daughters. I've seen them in the car, but I actually met them a couple weeks ago. We was on the lake. Yeah. About a month ago, I met them yeah. on the lake. And I mean, the spirit, when they got out the car, hey, how you doing? They, you know, the spirit, they, they, they just, the spirit, they just, the respect, just, just, the, just them, period. You could just tell is they're, you know, Coming from the right home, just like with her, her girls. Her girls always say to me, they're so respectful. Hey, Mr. A, I get a hug from them, whatever. And like I said, it's nothing I won't do for them because they're always participating. It's just, I just, you know, know them. They're, you know, Devonna, she's an excellent mother. Like every day, she literally have at least 10, 15 kids out the neighborhood in her house. Oh, Lord, I know that. That's every day. So, <clears throat> and that's nothing, that's nothing she put on Facebook, whatever. You know, how some people, uh, well, I woke up this morning, I, Cooked the kids breakfast, made the husband lunch. You got a went, went went um <laughs> went went jogged went jogged two miles. Came on, cooked my husband dinner. I mean, mm -hmm. ain't you supposed to do that anyway? Yeah, yeah. That's us, like like us waking up screaming. I'm a man. Everybody, yeah. you know, I'm a man. Yeah, I'm a man. man. Yeah, you supposed to do that anyway, man. You, you is a mom and a, and a wife, huh? So yeah, put your boots on and go on. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah. some of them mm-hmm. just want that that a extra tension. hand, yeah, yeah. that yeah. extra little attention hand. Man, yeah. that, I think that really mattered because um, coming up, man, I didn't I didn't have no male figure. I um, my first time going fishing was with Mr. Jack Fowler, the older guy staying in the neighborhood. Oh. Mr. Jack Fowler took me in his. I love that man, that Mr. Fowler. Uh, Mr. Fowler, wow. Mr. Fowler took me um, fishing for the first time. Oh, Mr. Charlie, that stayed across the street uh-huh. from Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie gave me my first fishing pole, and Mr. Jack took me fishing. Wow! So, um, man, I was good in sports. Like I said, my daddy was right there in Norco. I was in St. Rose, and I didn't know nothing about. My daddy started claiming me when my name started ringing in the streets for being, you know, for the wild stuff. Oh, Tyrone, or you know. Yeah. So that's what my oh that's oh that's my boy yeah. <laughs> but goddamn I mean <laughs> what about the pat on the back when I was playing baseball and knocking all the home runs out you know oh, I'm your boy I'm your boy because you hear me I'm I'm out there wild and I'm your boy but man you, parents should have been you know it's males male men you should would want to be in your child life because you don't know how that affect affect the child sometimes some of us X Street dudes we we need to hear I love you. I man, a bunch of dudes that's out there in the streets that's, you know, wild and wild with guns or whatever, man, and them dudes, nobody was never told I loved them. A lot of dudes, including myself, was making good grades in school. I never had nobody, you know, good job, son, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mom was always working. Mom, you know, I, my mom did an excellent job. Well, the, 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 the choices I made was because of me, not because of the way my mama raised me. But if I had a male figure around me, if I had a male figure around me to, to keep me in line or whatever, it turned out a whole lot different. So, um... What's up, my brother? We are on live TV. Uh, we're gonna this Saturday. I mean, next Saturday, five thirty in the morning. I mean, it was it was actually it's funny that Bryce is here right now because I called Dana and and, and um, Dana Dana was just supposed to be here because we had some more other guests that was supposed to come. They weren't right. able to make it, so Bryce is uh, was blessed to be here. Yeah, I was supposed to just be a chauffeur. <laughs> I said you, on the camera. I said you want to ride with me, and I knew he was gonna drive. And I don't want to drive, so. All right. So look, uh, Max, y'all just said y'all kids. Um, besides, besides the the the, the loving, and, you know, the stuff that y'all do with the kids or whatever, are they pretty much focused on it on their own? Y'all, you know, yeah. they pretty much focused yeah. on their own. I th- I think what we tried to do early, and we got it from our parents and like my older my older sisters and brothers. We all tried to even Bryce, his mom is great. Like try to ask them like what that what are your future out of school? What do you want to do out of school? Not as far as going to school, but what do you like to do? We always focused on what, we always focus on what you like to do most. What would you do that in this life? What would you do and not even get paid for it? My oldest daughter says she'd like to do hair. She said I could do hair and I don't even have to get paid for it. I said that is your gift. That's what you go. That's the thing you go after. Don't go to school. Don't go to college because you think we want you to go to college. That's going to waste my money. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Go, to, go to somewhere where something and do something that you like to do. And that's what we've tried to start doing. We'll find the thing that they like to do. Like our youngest daughter, she likes to write. So she has books that she has written. We just have to get them published. My middle daughter, she probably is the most nurturing person we have. She keeps talking about nursing school. I could see that. So we focus on the gifts that they have, their natural gifts, and then push them toward that. As opposed to trying to tell them, go to school for this, go to school for that, go to do this, go to do that. Then we ha- you have that sibling competition within kids. Like our oldest daughter was exceeding at everything she did. So our middle daughter was feeling like, hmm, it's not really, nobody really worries about what I do, what I do. So we started to like push her out there and get her to start doing stuff. You know, get out, get out there a little more. And now she's coming to her own and has found her own identity. Our youngest one, we never had to worry about that with her. But just focusing them and pushing them toward the, the thing that they like to do, as opposed to just just going to do something because you want you think your parents want you to do that. Yeah. My girls keep it as a competition. Like yeah. <laughs> they, uh-huh. they they really do. Yeah. Like oh, I got all A's. You know. Yeah, they do what, that what too. You, you yeah. know. Oh, how many clubs you win? Oh, I got one more. You know, they, it's a competition thing for them. Well, on the good side. Right. Well, it's not the jealousy thing. Yeah. So they try to keep it fun with each other. And I think that helps, too, when they have the support from each other. Right. Not just the parent. So, um. And, wait, not just each other. Because, like you said, I have many kids. I have... My neighbor next door has four kids to her house. My neighbor over here has two. So 
all of those kids pull together, not just the kids in my house. Yeah. We have a block that really support each other. And I listen to them at the bus stop because the bus stop is <laughs> my door, <laughs> ironically. So, but they at the bus stop and they're like, oh yeah, you got your certificates. Oh, you didn't do this. They push each other to do things, exactly. you know? Like at school, they have the reading log where they have to read so many books by the end of the month and they get a little prize. And my daughter's a reader and she, there's, she's at the bus stop with three other little guys and she pushes them. Y'all not reading y'all books? Come on, you know? So it's them supporting each other too, which, keeping, which keeps them going. So basically, so basically always go back to the home. Regardless of regardless of <clears throat> regardless of this TV show, regardless of um, the essay contest, regardless of what me and Devon do, regardless regardless, you know, like I said, it's not trying to be no one parents, but it always go back to the home. And like I said, I guess that it, it you know it takes it takes like when you in a um, both parent home, husband and wife, it, it takes a joint effort to make sure that you keep them focused and at the same time keep it real with them because. If you sugarcoat with them at home and they get out in that real world, you know, you, you, you're basically just hanging them out to dry. It's, just, so you, it's not sugarcoated in the street. It's raw and uncut. Raw and uncut. Raw and uncut. Now, you know, when I go, um, sometimes when I go give, uh, matter of fact, um, the vice president for Neat Downing, she called me, it was last year, they had a, 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 child, a youth summit in um, Cologne. And so she called me like, hey, you want to come talk to the youth? I'm like, sure. Like, yeah. So I get there. I see a church band. I'm like, welcome to the youth revival. All these vans pulling up. I'm like, man. <laughs> like, all, I'm like, hey, you told me this was supposed to be on um, the youth. I'm thinking, I'm talking to a group of kids. This is the whole church. I'm talking about, <laughs> man, they had like 10 different pastors there. Different, man, they had like five different youth organizations and the whole church was packed. People standing up and everything. Oh, wow. I'm like, Lord. So I went up there. Like I said, I, I always give speeches like the people organization, even with this TV show. I never write anything down. I just sit there and I just get in that vein and I, I sit and, and look at the crowd, what have you. And man, I went up there and I gave it to him raw and uncut. In the, you know, we in church, so it, I gave it to him raw hot. The law came, it came, everything came out my raw, um, out raw and uncut, but it was, it was a nice raw and uncut. And man, when I love you, had the pastor, the, the pastor congregation, everybody like, oh yeah, we love this here. Y'all heard that, youngsters? And he gave it to y'all raw and, and we, you know, and they want me to come back, you know. Like I, I, I spoke at Wild Wayne um, summer camp. Um, I spoke at um, Annette Jones summer camp. She's someone who I love dearly. She, I had a Stop the Violence Summit, and she came and spoke for free when I first started, whatever. So I go speak with her at, at her camp. And um, like I said, she, you know, everybody who I really deal with, they're really intertwining their kids, and all of them, you know, focus, focus little kids or whatever. So like I said, that that topic came up, and me and Devon have been talking about it. I call her, I'm like, what the topic is again, for <laughs> What the topic is, and she, oh yeah, and so um, we we here right now talking about the topic. So um, maybe we have some different we have different things coming up. Well, the show will probably been in the show, the show will probably been in the show, but next week we will have some um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday when the kids get out on half a day. We're gonna do some things, something, at the, just something small, yeah, something small and sweet. Uh, the appreciation for our yeah, little kids. Yeah, appreciate for the kids. The Wednesday we'll have um, it'll be nachos and we're gonna do like nachos and frozen, frozen cups, cups one day. Thursday we'll another do day hot dogs. we're gonna do hot dogs and, then and Friday, drinks, and then we're gonna do pizza one day. That Friday. Okay. So that would <laughs> that's um something upcoming that we have coming up. Also, man, you can go see what we do. We don't just talk about what we do. We're really active. Um, Support to, our t-shirts. Go to the letter youmustlearn.com and just check out the t-shirt. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see nonprofit, you'll see activities, you'll see all kind of different little things you can hit on. Go click on it and see what we really do. We actually, we really, really pull people off the street. And like I said, I, 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 I love to brag about it that, well, well however you want to take it, um, that I've actually pulled at least 15 dudes from jail off the streets. All of them have jobs. All of them, they're plumbers, they're welders. You know, um, guys call me when they want to talk about something, man. I, I got into it with such and such, such and such. And I'm honored to say that I have enough, that I was 100 with, with people, you know, all my life or whatever, that they'll sit down and listen to me and put this gun down and, and you know, and go the other way or whatever. So, I mean, do you want to work with us? 
You can give me a call at 504-813-2915, or you can call Devon at 504-621-2493. And support us. Log on. Get those T-shirts. T-shirts, because the T-shirts actually fund what we do. If, um, like I said, besides that, we come out of our pocket or we do fundraisers or whatever. So we don't beg anyone for money. We don't, you know, whatever. If you want to buy a T-shirt, the T-shirt fund stuff, or if you want to donate, you can you can donate. Just go to the website. Like I say, once again, it's the letter U must learn dot com. And you can contact me at 504-813-2915. Or myself at 504-621-2493. Okay. And I want to thank our guests again for coming, Bryce and Dana. Um, Will Wright, that is. And like I say, let me inject this here because I love this. I, I grew up with it. <laughs> Look, you know, it's so funny. We grew up together. Me and Dana, me and Dana grew up on the uh, same street. And her and Sam and Monica, they jumped me one day. <laughs> <laughs> and Monica, do you look what's going on right now? Look, Monica, I ran home. Boy, look, cause it was it wasn't nothing to mess with down there. I ran home. Monica, get your go go down there and fight them all. I said, man, screw up down there. <laughs> and lo and behold, my crazy tail go down there and got skinned up like a cat. <laughs> So like I said, I always mess with, I always mess with it. Like I said, man, that's childhood from we come up, we come up from young. You know, we grew up together. How my mom, Mr. Uh, Mr. Maurice and Miss Sadie, that's like you know, extended parents. I ate at their house many of times. Got fussed at them many a times. I played in their house and whatever. So you know, it's all family. Bryce grew up with him. Uh, went to school together. Every time he stayed in those same rooms, I stayed in Preston Hollow. So we. We was always just in our separate whatever, but we always had a good relationship. I consider him a friend of mine, good childhood friend. And Devonna, to my left, I mean, she's the secretary for uh, not Dr. K. Also, she's a childhood friend. I love her kids like they're my own and nothing I wouldn't do for them. And you have any words you want to say? Support our t-shirts. <laughs> you must learn dot com. Or contact me. me. <laughs> Contact your what number again? 504-621-2493. And mine is 813-504-813-2915. And the website is, once again, the letter you must learn com. And they have a leaflet right in the corner. You can click that leaflet and it'll bring you to the nonprofit or you can sc uh, scroll down and they have a button for the nonprofit also. We want to just thank you for having us and asking me to come over. We actually are headed out in a, right now. We have the baccalaureate. Our daughter is graduating Thursday, so we can head it over to Destrahan now yes, to see her not cap and gown yeah. for the first time. And we have an open house with our other daughter. So we're going yeah. no, no, um, to um, chef chef so oh, split one it one out. Cam, and I really appreciate this, and I think more topics like this should be talked about. Oh, man, we have, a, we, yeah, we, have a bunch of we have a bunch of hard hitting topics that's going to stay coming to you all. So, y'all just stay tuned with us. and. You know, keep us on tuning in every other Saturday, 5.30 on WUPL. Get with us at Dr. K. You heard me. You heard me. on in the game. You heard me stay away from that dope player and stack of change. You heard me. I say I'm going to holler at you later on in the game. You heard me stay away from that dope player and stack of change. You heard me.